through two weeks, there's no reason to be worried about the Green Bay Packers pass rush. But if they don't come through against Will Levis, okay, maybe now start to be worried. You are Locked On Packers, your daily Green Bay Packers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Packers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Peter Bukowski, and I cover the Packers for The Leap, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked On Packers, the number one Packers podcast on the internet. And the show for fans who know what happened, they want to know why and how. Thanks to everyone who makes Locked on Packers their first listen every day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. Today's episode brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Lily Zhao on the show today. We will talk about Malik Willis, Jordan Love, this pass rush, and that's where I want to start. The biggest question I think people have about this team long-term, understanding Jordan Love is going to come back, if not this week, probably next week, and if not next week, the week after that, is where has this pass rush gone? It was one of the best four-man rushes in the league by pressure rate last season. Top five in what, whoever's charting you want to go to because pressure rate can be a little volatile. Like you don't, one man's pressure is not another man's pressure. But what has happened the first two weeks? And this is something that Jeff Halfley has talked about, that Matt LaFleur has talked about. It is not indicative of the plan generally, the culture generally of how this team wants to play. And Jeff Halfley, after the Eagles game, talked about this and even acknowledged that those of us who are watching these things carefully and the the people there every day in the building watching practice may have gotten a little bit of whiplash seeing them play week one. They hadn't seen week two yet, but week two after seeing what they look like in training camp and the preseason when the starters especially were out there. This attack, 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 hair on fire, tear up the field, go penetrate, go disrupt, go do all the things that every fan wants their defensive front to go do. And the reason that they did that is because they played Jalen Hurts and Anthony Richardson, quarterbacks who need to be contained. And the Packers by and large, contained those players in the run game. Anthony Richardson didn't do really anything really until that that last drive where he picks up a big gain with his, with his legs. But like, it wasn't really material to the outcome of the game. And Jalen Hurts, the Packers did a great job containing Jalen Hurts on the ground, both in the design run game and as a scrambler. So mission accomplished in a lot of ways from that. And Matt LaFleur said he gives his defense a lot of credit for playing disciplined. And in fact, it wasn't until the last drive against Philly where Jalen Hurts got a couple runs off because the Packers got undisciplined with their rush lanes. And so that is, I think, indicative of where the Packers have been. The question is, what will change moving forward? And when you look at this week, This is the week to unleash hell. Will Levis is a quarterback prone to the kinds of mistakes that make you go, what the hell is that guy thinking? One of the worst interceptions you will ever see in week one, followed by one of the worst fumbles you will ever see in week two. And the Packers have been making a living off turnovers through two weeks. This is an offensive line that last year was the worst group in the NFL. The worst group in the NFL. And this year, they're only slightly better, 26th 
in pass block rate, according to Pro Football Focus. They're 22nd in pass block win rate. But, for example, Nicholas petit Ferrer, who's the right tackle for the Titans, he set a next-gen sports era record on Sunday against the Jets. He allowed, in 35 pass-blocking snaps, 13 pressures by himself. 13 pressures by himself. It was a 37% pressure rate. This is a Rashawn Gary special. He is going to eat this dude alive. And the other part of the first two weeks isn't just that there were contain rush, mush rush, that kind of thing. But you're playing two of the best offensive lines in the league. Indianapolis and and. Philadelphia, along with the Detroit Lions, that's probably the three best offensive lines the Packers are going to face all year. And in two of those games, they're mush-rushing the quarterback. They face a bad offensive line this week and a quarterback that does not feel pressure well and when he does feel pressure, is prone to making mistakes. Not only is this a week where you're expecting Rashawn Gary to win his one-on-ones, where you're expecting Devontae Wyatt and Kenny Clark to win their one-on-ones, when you're expecting Preston Smith to win his one-on-ones, but where you expect Jeff Halfley to take the governor off a little bit. I think one of the reasons why you didn't see him rush or blitz Jalen Hurts in in like significant ways is this reason of wanting to contain him. We saw um, on on a uh, and long convert. I don't remember if it was third or fourth and long against the Colts. The Packers brought pressure against Anthony Richardson. And he escaped and created a first down with his legs. That's what happens sometimes when you blitz these mobile quarterbacks. Will Levis, he's a good athlete for the position. He's just not going to do that the same way. And so if Jeff Halfley is not more aggressive in this game, if the front does not unleash hell in this game, that's when you start to go, okay, what's going on here? Like Kenny Clark has not played particularly well through two weeks. Is it because he's still trying to feel his way through this, this systemic change? Is it because he's not quite sure exactly on every play what he's being asked to do? I don't know. But I do know that this week he's got a favorable matchup, whether he's playing the left guard, the right guard, the center, whatever. He's going to be better than that player. Go beat the crap out of him. Go attack and get to Will Levis. They don't have a run game that you're really particularly worried about. Tony Pollard's a nice player. Tajay Spears is a nice player. They're not Jonathan Taylor. They're not Saquon Barkley. They're just not. And there were a couple of times I went back and, you know, this is something I'm writing about for the leap. This is, Jonathan Taylor sometimes is just going to beat you. There were a couple of times last Sunday where the Packers had pretty good coverage. They had pretty good run fits. And one guy just gets a little out of position at one time, even after the initial move, and all of a sudden, Jonathan Taylor sets up a block and he's off to the races. I don't expect Tony Pollard and Tajay Spears with this offensive line to do the same sort of thing. If they do, then then maybe you do start to be nervous. But I'm not nervous yet. I think this is a week for the Packers to go say, this is who we are foundationally, fundamentally, against most teams, against a team like the Lions, against a team like the 49ers, where you're not having to contain rush every rep. It's get up the field. It's disrupt. It's hair on fire. It's fly off the edge. It's just be crazy and go mess stuff up. That's what I think you're going to see on Sunday. And if we don't, then then we're going to have to start asking some difficult questions about this team. But I don't think we're going to be there. Speaking of difficult questions, we'll answer some. We'll talk about some. With Lily Zhao next on Locked on Packers. Today's episode brought to you by our friends at DoorDash. When I need a meal in a hurry, when I need groceries, for example, in a hurry, when I don't feel like cooking, which is frankly not that often because I love to cook. I want someone to truly deliver, pun intended. That's why I use DoorDash. DoorDash is the place for me to find all the food that I want to eat. And I know that it's going to be delivered to me in a timely manner 
responsibly, reliably, restaurants that I like. That's what DoorDash is for me on game day or just a random Tuesday. That's what I want. Use the promo code LOCKEDFALL24 for 50% off up to $10 when you spend $15 or more on your first order. This is a limited time offer. Terms apply. Promo is not valid for orders containing alcohol. DoorDash, your game, your door to game day greatness. Your door to more. Download the DoorDash app now to order your game day favorites. Must be 21 to order alcohol. Drink responsibly. Alcohol available only in select markets. Today's episode also brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Well, we have something a little bit different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season, Sunday afternoon, out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel any time. Visit FanDuel.com to check out situations like, okay, the Packers, what is what is Jordan Love? Is he going to play? If you think he's going to play, then you're getting really good value on Packers plus two and a half. Even if he's not, I think you're getting good value on Packers plus two and a half. That has actually been bet up. It opened at two, which is interesting. Packers now getting that extra half point. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Visit FanDuel.com to download America's number one sports book. The Green Bay Packers got a win with Malik Willis, the home opener, Matt LaFleur, a masterclass. And it's always a masterclass when we were with our pal Lily Zhao from Fox 6 in Milwaukee to answer a Malik Willis themed question this week. <laughs> Lily, how are you doing? I am doing well, and, you know, it's it's a great week to talk about Malik Willis and the Green Bay Packers and their win over the Colts, so enjoying the nice sunshine here in Wisconsin all week. So I am feeling rejuvenated and doing well. Is how you doing, Peter? I'm good. I'm good. We're going to get to the, the win and all the good Malik Willis vibes in a second. Uh, there's been a lot of reporting around what Jordan Love was or wasn't going to do last week. Um regardless of that, there is now some sentiment, Rob Domofsky, Tom Silverstein, and others have reported that they think there is a, a real chance he could play this week. What do you believe about what is going on with Jordan Love, where he's been and where he's going? After reading all that, I, I you know, at, at first I was thinking it's game and ship, you know, the whole, we'll kind of see where he's at. We're leaving the door open. And then as we got on, you know, it's I don't think Matt LaFleur is just saying that to say that. I think there's truth behind it. And then you hear reports that he it, he was close to playing. And from looking at him on the sidelines, you know, I, I know it was it was an MCL sprain. So he was walking around fine, had a, a sleeve on his left leg. And, and it was just, just nice to see him out there on the sidelines, frankly, uh, to be able to coach up Malik and, and be with his teammates. But from all the things that I'm kind of hearing and, you know, Matt LaFleur has been asked about it every single day is yeah. the narratives changed this week of, you know, if he's going to play on Sunday, he's got to practice. So I think the big thing to do is to see Wednesday, is he out there? Is he out there in a limited capacity? If he is, signs are pointing to potentially seeing him play on, on Sunday. Um, so I think we'll just have to wait an extra day just to kind of see what that will be maybe officially, or maybe he does practice Thursday. Um, but I think he's trending in the right direction. That's amazing. Considering, I think we all kind of feared the worst after that happened, oh, yeah. right? We were thinking weeks, months, whatever out for the year. Um, so I'm, I'm encouraged by what I've seen, what I've heard. And now I'm just kind of curious as to that practice is, is will we see him out there? That's the big question. I, part of the, the cynical part of me, Lily wonders if the, the practice thing is just to get out of jail free card. Like, okay, last week he could have played if he just said, Hey, on Saturday, on Sunday, I'm ready. They would have played him. But now, okay, well, now it's been two weeks since he hasn't practiced. And it's it's easy for Matt LaFleur to say, well, but I said he he feels okay, but he would have had to practice and you really get this extra week. I, 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 I talked about this yesterday. I don't want to go too much, much further into it, but I do think there's a chance he plays this week. And that makes all of what happens in the next couple of days very interesting. You were there um, for the, the win over the Colts. You were in the locker room after. Um, Set the stage for us a little bit because these kinds of wins can have a galvanizing force in a locker room. What were the vibes after? 
Vibes were high. Um, I'll, I'll just point out a couple things that I saw that I heard. Uh, Jair Alexander was his normal self, you know, uh, you know, talking with teammates. It was fun to hear. Um, Eric Wilson, who got the second interception of the game, was doing an interview with his locker. I think it was Xavier McKinney, you know, is behind us in the scrum and he's screaming, Eric will, Eric will. Like he's all pumped that, you know, his, his guys getting the media attention and rightfully so. Um, Evan Williams, the rookie safety who got that interception was holding tightly onto that football. It was his first career interception. So he was stoked. But the interesting part though, Peter was the offensive linemen. They were just, they were gashed. I mean, we all know what happened with Josh Myers. He looked tired. Elton Jenkins was like, man, give me a minute. I got to cool down. Um, so those guys were tired. It was hot, but the vibes were high. Um, you know, guys were very happy. It was a joy talking with them afterwards and just talking to guys that, you know, and Eric Wilson and Evan Williams, like, you know, guys that we traditionally were kind of just getting based off their performance. But um, it was great to hear from them and hear their perspective. And I think guys were having a lot of fun. We saw the the uh, video that the Packers put out of Malik Willis getting the game ball. And those vibes certainly still remained after the fact. It seemed like one of those wins that I think if you ask Matt LaFleur, favorite favorite regular season wins this would have to be up there right like he he seemed so happy for Malik Willis but there has to be a selfish part of him where he goes man I just coached a damn good game this has to be on the list of of really incredible Matt LaFleur performances that we've seen since he's been here and there have been plenty of them Lily like I'm thinking about that Falcons game with no receivers where they scored 30 plus points uh, I'm thinking of the regular season game in Arizona on Thursday night like there there have been some games like this but this one had to have felt special for Matt. Certainly, because I'm sure he won't be the, he probably won't say it out loud, right? But he's got to believe down down low that, listen, I was put in a predicament. We were, we were bringing in a backup quarterback who up until yesterday, or I'm sorry, Monday, had only been with the team for three weeks, not even a month, um, wasn't with them throughout the entire offseason. And you bring him in, you need to coach him up, but you put together a really good game plan around him. And I think what was really impressive was, the confidence he had in Malik and then the confidence in Malik himself to go out there and actually execute the game plan. Because we all know you can drop something perfect for your guys, but they have to go out and execute it. But what he was able to draw up was great. I mean, there was a lot of motion, the run game, you know, designated QB runs when needed. You saw um, Malik, you know, able to kind of throw the ball and, and move the, the, the sticks a couple times. But I think what was so telling was that touchdown pass to Wicks when you see Matt LaFleur just jumping up and down. I don't think I've yeah. ever seen him jump higher uh, after a touchdown pass. <laughs> I'm not sure so. he's capable of jumping much higher. <laughs> so that kind of just gives you a sense of just what probably it meant for him to say, like you mentioned, I did the thing. I did the thing and our guys executed. And and if you if there was a Josh Jacobs touchdown, if that penalty, holding penalty hadn't taken it back, there would have been more points on the board, you know? So – well, and He's if Josh Jacobs doesn't well, that fumble too. at the one yard line, um, yeah. that, that's part of this too. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're going to need a cleaner performance to beat the Tennessee Titans on offense. If they're going to have to use this same formula, I think there's going to be half, there's going to be ways um, that they're going to have to evolve this. But defensively, if they get takeaways and Will Levis is someone who will take the ball away, this felt like a step forward um, for this defense. What, what did you see in terms of differences week one to week two? Sure. I saw, you know, the, the penalties got cut down, but the the kind of the similar thing was the pass rush wasn't really getting there. Hmm. Granted, mobile quarterback, that kind of thing. But what I did like was the fact that you can't test the secondary because when you test them, they get interceptions. And that's just been such an improvement, I think, just through these first two weeks and we saw all of last season. So uh, testing the secondary normally leads to takeaways for the Packers defense. And that's been fun to see. Uh, but I really Five like interceptions that. through two games. They had seven all of last seven year. Last that year. Is, and, the, and Keisha Nixon dropped the pick uh, and Cray Walker dropped the pick. So like they could yeah. have seven or more. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's been impressive. But what I don't want to see happen is this kind of be the Joe Barry, Bryce Young Panthers game where Will <laughs> Levis yeah. just finds another gear. And then we're talking about, oh no, what happened? So Will Levis will be making mistakes. It's up to the Packers to really pressure him up front to help him make those mistakes and capitalize when a ball hopefully does come their way. But I like the aggressiveness. And, and what I want to see now is just the pass rush get going. But the fact that they're able to hold their own in the secondary, I think has been impressive. How can Malik Willis lead the Green Bay Packers to victory? We'll talk about that next with Lily Zhao. 
Today's episode brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. You can prioritize only the best deals. Curation makes it easier to save more on sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Plus, with panoramic views from your seat, you can get that in the app before you buy. You know what you're getting yourself into when you click buy. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. And thanks to everyone who makes Locked On Packers their first listen every day. Now, for your second listen, go check out Locked On NFL. Now with two shows every day. First, the madman Tyler Rowland kicks off your morning with a double shot of NFL espresso. Then stop by the barbershop with Tony Wiggins for some real NFL talk. Find Locked On NFL on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. The, the way that, and, and we've talked about this through the offseason, the way that Brian Gutekinds ha- has remade this safety room on the fly. They went from a, a huge weakness to arguably the strength of this defense through two games is is incredible. I'm I'm not sure I can remember something like this. Maybe going back to 2019 when they go from what they had as pass rushers to Zedaria Smith, Preston Smith, Rashawn Gary, like all that. So Brian Gutekinds has proven a, a bit there. It seems like this is the inflection point week, though, Lily, to your point on the pass rush. If they can't, this is one of the worst pass blocking offensive lines in the league. Um, if if they can't do it now, how how concerned should we be that, that this is not going to get fixed this year for whatever reason? Because it's the same guys that were really good last year. Yeah, and that's the, that's the big question, right? Can they do it? Because we saw Chicago's ability just to kind of run through that offensive line and get to Will Levis and, and create this sort of momentum for, for a Bears defense that dominated that game. So you want that same juju, I would say, for this Packers defense because, like you mentioned, this is the game to do it. This is a game to prove it. And yep. maybe this is a game this week where if they're not getting interceptions, they're getting sacks. They're getting quarterback hits. They're getting lots of tackles for loss. That's what, I want to see these guys in the backfield. I want to see them eat. So this is the week to do it against a quarterback that can get very jittery and, and can make bad decisions. So if there's a week, Peter, it's against the Tennessee Titans yeah, and Will Levis. He will, he will do things that make you just go, oh my God, I can't believe he just did that. Um, and some of them will be good and some of them will be terrible. And Anthony Richardson is is much the same way. I think Anthony Richardson's highs are higher than Will Levis and the lows are not quite as low. So that that makes for an interesting blend here. Like I, I will start being concerned about someone like Rashawn Gary if if we don't see it this week because like Nicholas Petit Frere, the right tackle for the Titans, is one, one of the worst pass blockers in the league right now. So I, I want to see it. I need to see it. Speaking of, of people that need to step up, the linebackers, Lily. Um, at, at what point at what point do, do the Packers need to consider a change here with with Quay Walker, with Isaiah McDuffie? You have Tyron Hopper, you have Edron Cooper. I understand they're rookies, but like it was it was the defense played better, but the linebacker play was ugly on Sunday. It was. And that was kind of question, I think, in week one as well, right? Yeah. Um, and so we we see that kind of carry over, but I know that the coaches are certainly high on Quay Walker. We know Isaiah McDuffie, great in the run game. Um but and he's a Jeff Hafley guy, point, Boston College. We we know exactly, that there's that overlap there. Exactly. But at some point, you're going to have to perform. I just feel like they were a little bit, they were a step slow, or they just were just not getting to the right gaps and, and making the right plays. And so I know we were kind of watching, you know, some of the Eagles stuff, and you're thinking, oh, you know, they almost got Saquon, but they didn't get Saquon. And then that kind of was the same thing with Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, it was um, like a carbon copy. Of it was a carbon copy. Taylor, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, you know, I, I do want to see them succeed, but – Maybe at some point it's we have two younger guys, two rookies that why not put them in there? I think the the magic for Matt LaFleur and this team is that you can play so many different guys and it gives them a chance to just get reps out there. And who knows, maybe Tyron Hopper or Edrin Cooper shine against Tennessee. And, and that's kind of the answer for one of the linebacker spots. But to your point, I, I do think that we need to see better play from from Quay and, and Isaiah. Why do you think they're not using someone like Evan Williams in a role like that? Like in, instead of instead of okay, we're gonna these linebackers. Okay, no, how about big nickel and and you take a linebacker off the field and you put a guy who clearly you want to put on the field. If you're taking Javon Bullard off, a really good player so far, 
to put on Evan Williams. You must think Evan Williams is a pretty good player. So why not why not go that route? I, I, I'm, I'm very confused as to why we haven't seen that so far. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. I, I do think that we need to see more of that, to be honest with you. Um, I think either guy's a playmaker. I think Javon Bullard might just play better opposite X. So maybe that's why. But I, I think these young guys are all going to be playmakers. So why not try that out? It's still early in the season. We're not going to have, you know, your defensive starter set. There's going to be a rotation with guys like there is at every position. Yeah. Why not do go out there and do that and see what you have? I mean, Evan certainly played well last or on Sunday. I mean, he got the game clinching interception. So plug guys in there. Let's see what we have here. And at the end of the day, it doesn't work. And you go back to kind of what you know. But I really do think Bullard's going to be great. Williams is going to be great. And you kind of have that issue per se that we have a lot of really talented safeties. Where do we plug them in? Yeah, maybe for the linebackers who are underperforming. That's just a thought. Um Okay, so they go out and they run the ball a, a billion times on Sunday. That, that's an approximate number. <laughs> um, and they throw it 14 times. Can they can they beat the Titans with that same sort of formula, or will they need more from Malik Willis? Do you think? I think they'll need more. Um, this is not this is a tough Tennessee Titans defense. I mean, their front yeah. got certainly got after Caleb Williams in in their opener, and they certainly can snuff out the run. So I, I think if you're too run heavy and and you rely on that, and you don't let Malik kind of get into a rhythm with the passing game, that might cost you. Or, you know, it might just be more of a battle than you want it to be. So we all know Malik Willis has an arm. We've seen it. I think it's just more getting him more comfortable and, and putting a lot more, you know, pass plays in that game plan for him. Because I think uh, one of the receivers was asked after the game, do you guys need to kind of progress with Malik for a more pass heavy offense to beat the Titans? And I think these guys know that. I mean, I don't think these yeah. receivers are used to really being targeted as few times as they have, but that was yeah. a game plan for Tennessee. Receivers are always going to say, yeah, let's throw the ball more, though. Let's throw the ball. But I think the game <laughs> plan this week is probably more of a run-pass balance, I'll say. I think it's going to have to be. Uh, Matt LaFleur said he plans to be patient with Braden Arvison in this kicking game. Are you? Listen, he hasn't cost them a the game. <laughs> so it, it would have made probably our... Maybe. Ooh, it would have mattered in week one. I know, I, well, I know, I know, I know. Um, but I'll say from week two, it didn't cost him a game. It certainly made us all sweat the last couple minutes. You yeah. know, if you get the field goal, you don't have to worry about it. Um, but that being said, who else are they going to go to? Is Alex Hale going to be your your answer, right? Yeah, this is the so they're going to have to rely on him unless they bring somebody else in. So I think at this point, he was steady three for three. But it is inconsistent. Um, and But I will say the one shining point is that he's been good on extra points. That has not been an issue with him. It's just the field goals. So I, I think be patient with Braden Arvison. Bar is so low. <laughs> just, just make a couple field goals. Just got to get him in the range. <laughs> That's where we're at. You know? That we, that, you know, the Packers were hoping to not have to deal with it. It's Jordan Love. You're going to score a bunch of touchdowns. Don't worry about the field goals. It all of a sudden, it seems much more important, right? When you need every drive, it's, it's going to be like, you know, extracting blood from the stone to get uh, these these points. And so to have a kicker there, you're all of a sudden where it's in the spotlight way more than it might be otherwise. Like, I think if Jordan Love were the quarterback, we probably would not through two weeks be talking about Braden Arvison, but he's not. And so we are. Yeah, when do you right. when do you expect Jordan Love back? Let's just let's just end there. Um, I'll say is Tennessee week four. Or, I'm sorry, uh, Minnesota week four? Minnesota's week four, yeah. I, I'd say week four. I'd say I think the team trusts Malik enough now. Just give just give Jordan another week to heal up. Um, don't throw him out there early, which I know they won't. But I'd say maybe the Minnesota game. Is Do you think what happened against the Colts, winning that game, allows you to be a little bit more patient? Like, Do you think that impacts the decision at all? Because I would like, I would like to say no from the outside. But I, that just does not seem like how the Packers operate. Like they, if if they can be conservative with injuries, usually their default is let's be as conservative as we can. I, I think it did. I think if they had gone out there late in the egg, Malik had a really bad game. Now you're kind of wondering, do we have to kind of push Jordan up a little bit more right. than we're comfortable? Oh, and two, with? that's brutal. Yeah, oh, and two. And then, you know, if he doesn't play well and you start Malik and Jordan's not there, you're oh, and three. And now we're like, oh, what do we do? I think with how he played against the Colts, that gives more confidence to start him on Sunday against the Titans and then wait for Jordan maybe to come back for week four. So that's what I'm thinking. I could very well be wrong. Jordan could be back on Sunday and, you know, we'll, we'll be good. But uh, I, I think maybe that week four, give him two weeks, recuperate, don't throw him out there too early. And I think Malik probably starts on Sunday, but that's just what I'm thinking. 
I think it's I think it's about 50-50. I think you're right. I think it's about 50-50 with, with Jordan Love right now. And I think it's probably 70-30 next week. I think it's it's more likely than not that he will play against the Vikings. We will see. I think the, the key is going to be, uh, can Malik Willis make fewer mistakes than Will Levis? And if he can, the Packers can win. That's that's how I feel about it. And then can we not see another touchdown callback because of a penalty? That's what I want to see. <sighs> you know, or or a fumble <laughs> at the one-yard line. Yeah, the Packers, that too. It's, it's kind of remarkable. They won with Malik Willis once again having red zone issues on offense and and yet it didn't matter in this one if they can just like go three for four in the red zone against the titans they're gonna win and you know that that's um that's where where the packers are right now so lily mm -hmm. we will talk to you next week um hopefully about another malik willis or jordan love who knows win thanks peter all right thanks to lily for joining the show always great to talk to her we have our crossover thursday coming tomorrow our pal tyler roland Gets you set for Packers, Titans, a Malik Willis revenge game spot. We'll see if he is as bullish on Malik Willis this week as he was last week when the Packers were playing a division rival. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked on Packers. Follow us on every other social media, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Locked on Packers. Subscribe wherever you get podcasts, Locked on Packers, so you can stay Locked on Packers.